Once upon a time, there was a very rich prince. A prince so rich, in fact, he had five palaces, fifty servants, ten concubines. He had great feasts every day, great parties, and he knew people. Well, aside from all this, he was extremely, extremely unhappy. He never smiled, he never even laughed. And, well, this prince had been, of late, doing kind of crazy stuff, just, uh, trying to find happiness. You know, he would go to the casinos, play the cards, he would go to all the shows, and more recently he had been climbing to the mountain tops of mountains and diving off in icy streams and doing all kinds of stuff that um, unsavory acts that were questionable and of questionable safety. Well this prince, he had journeyed into the wilderness, the original wilderness, and a lot of people told him, you know, you shouldn't do that, but he went ahead and he went with ten of his servants, you know, carrying things for him into this wilderness, into the dark wilderness for seven days and seven nights. One by one, his servants were picked off. When they were picked off, he would hear a cry and then suddenly they'd be gone. One by one, they were gone until finally it was just the prince walking alone. He felt his heart racing. He felt his heart beating faster and faster. And then he saw the beast coming toward him. But then, you know, someone must have been looking after the prince because something stopped the beast. Something came up and stopped the beast. You know, the prince... The prince was actually in such a panic, he didn't see what happened. He just heard somebody say, Go now and live. He knew that he had been saved. And so, he walked out of the forest. He was relieved, but, you know, quickly when he came back, you know, he went back to his old ways. And it wasn't until somebody reminded him, you know, asked him what happened to all of his servants that he realized that he had been extremely lucky and he had been extremely careless. What way is this to live, he asked himself, and so the prince decided, I'm going to give up my wealth. And so he decided to live as a beggar. So this prince lived as a beggar. He didn't do anything that was fun boring life. He would sit around and ask for money. He would ask for food. And what he didn't need, he would give to others. This prince became thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And as the spring turned to summer and the summer turned to fall and then the fall finally to winter, he began to shiver more and more and more and more. Oh, this prince, mm. he was around nowadays, they would say he's anorexic, but he was thin, I mean, he was thin. So, one day, this prince, just on the verge of dying, he was sitting there, begging. And he heard somebody come up before him, behind him throwing a great feast and say, you're being careless again, Prince. Go now, live. And he didn't hear, hear the person who said this. He recognized the voice, you know, the same voice that had been in the forest to save him from the beast. And he looked back and he saw the feast and he was so thankful. Said, what have I done? I've been following this life of denying myself and now I almost died. So he ate and he decided that he was gonna take care of himself from now on. And he decided that he needed something in search of and he thought, you know, I don't know how to live. She said, 
go now and live, but how will I do that? So he went in search of this lady, this nymph, this creature of the forest, this uh, Madonna, as he had imagined her in, in his mind. And, well, he traveled through the forest, he knocked on the door and said, you ever heard of this beautiful lady? He described her voice, you know, that's really all he knew, but he described her character, or what he imagined her character to be, and he walked house to house, you know, I don't know who you're talking about, no, 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 and he finally came to a house, and, he op and the door opened, and there's this ugly old hag, he said, have you ever heard of this person? Oh, she's beautiful. She's stunning. And the hag laughed and then said, I thought I told you to go and live. The man was taken aback. Hearing the voice, he knew it was the same woman. And, well, the man said, I don't know how to live and asked the woman if she would teach him. So she laughed and said that she would. And she said, you have to come out to the forest with me again. So they went out into the forest and they walked. And they walked. And well, the woman, they talked and the two got to know each other a little bit. Finally, finally, they came to pass, and they came to the stream, and the woman thought, hmm, you know, you've given up everything, and you've even gone in search of something, but I think what's really holding you back, really holding you back, is right there in that stream, and so he said, go look in that stream. So he looked, he said, I don't see anything, I just see my reflection. He said, look closer. He said, I still don't see anything, I still don't see anything. Look closer. So he said, nothing. Look closer. Pretty soon he was uh, nose to nose with his own reflection. She said, or he said, I still don't see anything, you're an idiot. She said, no, you're the fool pushed him in and, and said, go now and live. And the old man, and, and the man, he just started laughing and finally realizing what she was talking about. Laughing for the first time. And then he went and he lived. The end.